come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Morning. morning. Again, morning to those who join us from home today. Just thinking, you know, we're in the hall, but we're in the church. There's a front row, it's always the last to get filled up. There's a bit Catholics in the back of the church and walking forward. Uh, let's, um, let's prepare ourselves again to offer our sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and may he bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> I read it from the book of Tobit. Anna was sitting, watching the road by which her son would come. She was sure at once it must be he, and said to the father, Here comes your son with his companion. Raphael said to Tobias before he reached his father, I give you my word that your father's eyes will open. You must put the fish's gall to his eyes. The medicine will smart and will draw a, fil a filmy white skin off his eyes. And your father will be able to see and look on the light. The mother ran forward and threw her arms round her son's neck. Now I can die, she said. I have seen you again. And she wept. Tobit rose to his feet and stumbled across the courtyard through the door. Tobias came on towards him. He had the fish's gall in his hand. He blew into his eyes and said, steadying him, Take courage, father. With this he applied the medicine, left it there a while, then with both hands peeled away a filmy skin from the corners of his eyes. Then his father fell on his neck and wept. He exclaimed, I can see my son, the light of my eyes. And he said, Blessed be God, blessed be his great name, blessed be all his holy angels, blessed be his great name for evermore. For he had scourged me, and now has had pity on me, and I see my son Tobias. Tobias went into the house, and with a loud voice joyfully blessed God. Then he told his father everything, how his journey had been successful, and he had brought the silver back, how he had married Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, how she was following him now, close behind, and could not be far from the gates of Nineveh. Tobit set off to the gates of Nineveh to meet his daughter-in-law, giving joyful praise to God as he went. When the people of Nineveh saw him walking without a guide and stepping forward as briskly as of old, they were astonished. 
Tobit described to them how God had taken pity on him and had opened his eyes. Then Tobit met Sarah, the bride of his son Tobias, and blessed her in these words. Welcome, daughter. Blessed be your God for sending you to us, my daughter. Blessings on your father. Blessings on my son Tobias. Blessings on yourself, my daughter. Welcome now to your own house, in joyfulness and in blessedness. <coughs> Come in, my daughter. He held a feast that day for all the Jews of Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to my God by my will. My soul give praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My soul gives praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down, the Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. My soul it is the Lord who loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, signed God from age to age. My soul can the Lord. Please stand to the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your words gladden the heart of the Lord. They give light to the eyes. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. While teaching in the temple, Jesus said, How can the scribes maintain that the Christ is the Son of David? David himself, moved by the Holy Spirit, said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, and I will put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. In what way then can he be his son? And the great majority of the people heard this with delight. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> I know I am sometimes guilty of, of stating the obvious, but also I think sometimes the obvious has to be stated. We have to be sort of reminded of, of things. And the thing that I would say is our faith has developed. It's not been static. It's an ongoing development. And, and so is our scripture. That's also been something that has developed. There's been a, a maturing of, of ideas and theology in the writing as time has gone on. And so if you look at our early sort of Old Testament writing, people live a very long time, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And I don't want to say that didn't happen because God can do what God does, but I wouldn't automatically say it's necessarily literally true. But there was a real sense in which God blessed you. It was a sign that you were a virtuous person because you had a long life, because you had lots of money or cattle or wealth or property and children. These were signs of God's blessing because if you had a big family, a lot of children, then your name was going to live on and live on and live on and live on. There's a real sense in which the blessings were for this world. 
So everything that seemed to be a blessing was for this world. So we were here for a long time. We had everything this world could give us. And we had the fruits, the riches of it. These were signs of God's blessing, of God's favour. This was a virtuous man or a, or a virtuous woman. And then you get someone like Tobit, in the book of Tobit. There's a real challenge to that. You know, Tobit's a good man, he's a virtuous man, but suddenly he's blinded. In the most bizarre way, I have to say, as we heard at the start of the week. But he loses his sight, and then he seems to lose everything else as well, and misfortune falls on him and seems to fall on his family. And so his son Tobias goes off, and he marries a woman, Sarah, who's been married seven times before, and not one of the husbands has made it through the first night. No kids, no nothing, you know. So guess what Sarah and Tobias do before their first night? They pray to God, <laughs> right, Lord, see us through this. He returns. There's a sense of, no, our, our fortune is not just about this world. We're looking beyond that. And the later... Old Testament scripture will speak of that as well and it will sort of be brought to a real sense of fulfilment in the New Testament. But we're told what? Don't store up treasure for yourself on earth. Because it will corrupt, it will fade away. There's something greater we should be looking to, we should be working for. Something that is much more permanent. That life in God and that life with God beyond the grave. That there is more to our life than what we have here. There is more to our life than what we have been given now. And if we've been lucky enough to have been given plenty, thank God for it. But if you've not, if you've had misfortune or you're struggling, it's not because God is punishing you. It's not because God has turned his back on you. Again, you look at Luke's gospel, how blessed are the poor. They are the closest to God's heart. Those who struggle are in need. They are the little ones and the chosen ones and the blessed ones of God. Our faith evolves, our understanding evolves. Of God and, and of what is blessing, what is a full life, what is a rich life. It's not necessarily about what we've got in our pocket. Rich in faith, rich in love, rich in friendship and in association and blessing. Rich in that ability to give to receive to love and to be loved but in all with a sense of the God who is with us who journeys with us who has come to us who walks with us and has a fullness for us beyond anything we could imagine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread that we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Again, we make our prayer <clears throat> through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we awake with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with the Order of Bishops, with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Know of each other, sign of that peace. Lamb of God, This is our lamp. It takes away our sins and the sins of all the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life.
in a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. And let us pray. <laughs> Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, we make our prayer for <clears throat> Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen.